Good morning. Good morning. I love to just sit and listen to the visiting going on. So that's great. Good to see everybody. This is we're packing the joint. This is awesome. We're starting this week, so today starts our rally day Sunday. So all the Sunday school kids got all kinds of stuff to do, and Jennifer will make an announcement about that as we uh, when we do the announcements at the end. But boy, it's a beautiful day. Great to see everybody. So let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Seven. We continue with the order of confession and forgiveness found in your bulletins. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. 
As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite you to pray with me the prayer of the day that is found in your bulletin. Let us pray. O oh God, overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care, that we may reject whatever is contrary to you, and may follow all things that sustain our life. In your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. first reading for today is found in Exodus, the 32nd chapter, beginning at the 7th verse. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf, and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it, and said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. And then to you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt? with great power and with a mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians say it is with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, and how, they swore, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars in heaven. In all this land that I have promised, I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. The psalm is Psalm 51, the first to the tenth verse. We will read responsibly. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. For I know my offense, and my sin is ever before me. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. The second reading for today is found in 1 Timothy, the first chapter beginning at the 12th verse. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service even though I was formerly, formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, 
that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. For, but for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, <clears throat> making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you're able. according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, may be seated. We have the children come forward for a children's sermon. How's everybody doing? Good. <laughs> I gotta watch that. I'm gonna get tackled. All right. Hello, ladies. Zan, how you doing, buddy? Good. Boy, howdy. Who's excited for Sunday school? Yeah, it's gonna be a fun day. There's all kinds of stuff going on today. All right. So you guys, who here has a pet? Some of you guys have a pet, yeah? Who here has sheep? There are a couple of you, or goats, right? <laughs> yeah, so, so what would happen if your pet ran away? What would you do? Find it. You would find it, right? That's right. You guys would go out and you'd probably look all over the place, right? So, and, and have you ever had a sheep get out? A lamb get out? Yep. Have you ever had goats get out? They're kind of hard to catch, aren't they? But you got to go out and you got to work really hard and you got to find them and bring them back. And so that's what today's gospel is, is it talks about the importance of the one sheep that goes astray, that, that gets lost. And so the shepherd leaves everybody together because they're stronger together as a group. Who died? Yeah. I don't know. Who? Who? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Did you guys have a funeral for it? What? Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right. We're going to get all of the, the stories of the passed away pets here. <laughs> Good. Well, you guys, so so what happens is we find it. Well, that's what, that's what, that's what Jesus is telling people today. That each and every one of you are important. So if you're ever alone, guess who's with you? God, right? Always with you. Always has you. 
So it's good because we remember that Jesus is the good shepherd, right? Like, see up there? See up there in the window? And he has the one lamb, right? So if he's the good shepherd, who are the sheep? We are, right? Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to learn a song. We do this at least once a year. So I want everybody to stand up. Everybody stand up. It's going to be a fun one. All right, you guys ready? It goes like this. Repeat after me. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. All right, so then I'm going to do the verses, and then so I'm going to say, like, if I say, I, I don't want to be a Pharisee, then you guys say, a Pharisee? And then I'll say, I don't want to be a Pharisee. Then you guys say, a Pharisee? And then I finish it up. Okay, you guys ready? Should we try it? All right. I want to hear it loud. You guys, you guys ready to make some noise? Here we go. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. I don't want to be a Pharisee. Pharisee. I don't want to be a Pharisee. Because they're not fair, you see. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. Now, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to be a hypocrite. Because they're not hip with it. So good. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. Now, I don't want to be from Babylon. I don't want to be from Babylon. Because they babble on and on and on and on and on and on. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. All right, we're going to sing the chorus one more time. All right, congregation, I want everybody to sing with us. Let's make this loud. Let's have some fun. You ready? Right? Right, here we go. I just want to be a sheep. All right, I just want to be a sheep. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep. Awesome! Will you guys pray with me real quick? Just pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for this day, for these people, and for reminding us we're never alone. We ask for another amazing week. In your name, we pray super loud. All right, good job, you guys. Way to go, Ridge. song, nobody's going to remember what I say in the sermon, but they're going to be like, yeah, you know, we were sheep, and we went like this, you know, so that's good. So, so today, I'd like to welcome the family of Pastor Ron Olson, um, who passed away in February this year, and he served here from 70 to 79, is that right? And so, uh, and he asked for his final resting place to be right here at, at Salemsburg in the cemetery, and so this is it's such an honor for people that have served this place to want to come back and be here again. Um, and I get it. 
I understand it. This place is so full of joy and so many people, and so it's just a, a wonderful place to be. So today we celebrate that. As we talk about the Good Shepherd, you know, Pastor Olson was the shepherd here. He was a shepherd for a lot of people for a lot of years. And so, so as you guys know and all of you know, that one sheep is so important, but the shepherd has to go out and get them. So uh, I'm going to read the eulogy. Thank you to, to Tom for gathering all this information. Um, but here's a quick eulogy that, that Tom put together. Pastor Ron, Ronald H. Olson grew up in Colorado Springs, Colorado, with his mother, sister, and two brothers. He graduated from Bethany College in Lidsburg, Kansas in 1965 and Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota, and was ordained on June 11, 1970. He was installed as a pastor of the Fallen Salemsburg Lutheran Parish in the summer of 1970. Pastor Ron served as the motorcycle riding pastor of several Lutheran congregations from the time of his ordination until the early 2000s. In addition to fallen, the Fallen Salemsburg Parish, he served congregations in Valley Falls, Kansas, Grandview, Missouri, and Her Heber Springs, Arkansas. Ron loved riding a motorcycle, which was an early passion of his when he rode his scooter through mountain passes in Colorado on his way to work at the zoo. Fallen in Salemsburg was his first parish as an ordained minister after graduating from Northwestern, which is now called Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota. He moved to Kansas into the Salemsburg Parsonage with his wife Donna and three young children, Andrea, Nicola, and Aaron. They enjoyed this area and his work here, and he, and he loved having horses in the church pasture and the barn, and although it caused quite a ruckus when they brought their pony into the kitchen of the parsonage. I don't think there's a picture of that, but boy, wouldn't that be something. <laughs> Einer and Kristen Johnson's daughter, Diane Johnson, remembers babysitting for the Olson kids. Pastor Ron would pick her up on his motorcycle, and she would ride in the sidecar back to the Feist Parsonage. Now, what would you do if I showed up to pick up your kid to babysit my kids on a motorcycle? <laughs> I love it. Pastor Olson was one of a new generation of Lutheran pastors. Ordained by the Lutheran Church of America, he brought a new way of thinking from the traditional teachings of the Swedish Augustana Synod. His sermons were always theologically sound, yet they sparked controversy and generated critical thinking. Sometimes they were shocking to the listener, but he always challenged the parishioners to explore their own beliefs and expand their faith. There were some in the congregation who found the changes disconcerting, while others found it to be new and refreshing, but always filled with the grace and love of God. Pastor Ron, as he was known to us, was very active with the youth groups and encouraged the young people to be involved in church. He supported and guided the youth toward a life of faith. Known for his very gregarious laughter, he was also very fond of the ancient ways of the church and often used banners and processions here in the manner of a high church setting. The banners hung from the rafters of the church and were made by the young people with Christian messages. Pastor Ron sponsored Sunday outings to Canopolis Lake, weeks at Camp Tomashinga, and several trips with high school youth to, aim to Rainbow Trail Lutheran Camp, high in the mountains of Colorado. One of the highlights of Pastor Ron's ministry here was the inauguration of Salemsburg member John Carlin as the 40th governor of Kansas. Pastor Ron was invited to participate and give the invocation and prayers at Governor Carlin's inauguration on January 8, 1979, a truly memorable moment for all of us here at Salemsburg. Soon after, Pastor Ron Olson resigned as pastor of the fallen Salemsburg Parish in 1979. Ron was a proud graduate of Bethany College in Lindsburg, where he majored in English. After retirement, he continued to serve on Bethany alumni boards and also the board for Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota. His lifetime of dedicated pastoral service also included working with recovering alcoholics in Kansas City, Alzheimer's patients in Overland Park, and teenagers in halfway houses in Minneapolis. He lovingly cared for his second wife, Nancy, during the toughest years of her multiple scler scler sclerosis. Every few years, Pastor Ron would arrive on a Sunday morning and visit the Salemsburg and Fallen churches. You knew he was here even if you did not see him, when you heard that distinctive, loud belly laugh as he greeted old friends. 
Much to our delight, Pastor Ron Olson and his daughter Nicola traveled all the way from Oregon to visit us here and help celebrate the 150th anniversary of the Salemsburg Lutheran Church in 2019. This was his last visit to our community. Pastor Ron passed away in his sleep on Valentine, Valentine's Eve, February 14th in 2022, just after his 79th birthday on February 6th. If there is an appropriate saint for the occasionally Reverend Ron, as he used, used to laugh, as laughingly call himself, it would be St. Valentine, because Ron approached everyone with love. Although he suffered from dementia during the final years of his life, he would still offer you a cup of coffee when you visited him. Greet your latest news with his signature, Up, on the, Re Up the Revolution, a praised fist of affirmation and support, and tell you, I appreciate you. His life and his sermons were centered on the boundless love of God and the infinity of divine grace, and his belly laugh echoed in any room where two or more were gathered together. He always channeled the joy of Christ and the unconditional love of his neighbors. We are honored that Pastor Ron and his family have decided to bury his ashes here at Salemsburg Cemetery. He was much loved, and he must have loved the people of Salemsburg and fallen as well, since he chose this as his final resting place. We can now honor and remember him for the many gifts that he gave us and how much he enhanced our spiritual lives. And soon, through the generous donations of many of you, a headstone befitting this kind and gracious man and pastor will mark his final resting place here. So thank you, Tom, for, for doing all that work. Thank you guys for being here. And uh, what, a great way, what a great way to start the day. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, 21 years ago today, I was sitting, I was sleeping actually about this time. I was in uh, Wichita Falls, Texas, and we were at, uh, I was stationed at Shepherd Air Force Base at that time. I was working the night shift, and I remember Janelle coming in and waking me up, saying, wake up, wake up, wake up. You got to come see this. So we walked out, we lived in a small, dinky little apartment just off base, and our, uh, we had this little old, probably a 14-inch TV sitting on a milk crate and a couple of fold-out lawn chairs, and that was our living, our living room furniture. And we sat there and we watched as the first tower was on fire. Then we watched as the second jet flew into the second tower, and we were shocked. We were stunned. We didn't know what to do. It was this amazing tragedy that nobody knew how to handle. I was getting calls from the base. They said, stay off base now. We're not letting anybody on. We're not letting, it, letting anybody on. That was the beginning of my career in the Air Force. And for the next following 21 years, we continued to, uh, to fight those battles. We lost people on that day, and we lost people because of that day. And so today is a day of remembrance, a day that we remember all of those that perished on that day. And so many that have served to make that right. It was, a, it, was, it was such a tragic day, but what happened after that was a real miracle. We were the United States of America again. There was no division. Politics went away. It was about being each other's neighbors, helping each other out. You could walk around and you could see flags flying in neighborhoods and people that were just there for each other. What a glorious thing to be a part of, to see that unity. Now, in today's gospel, Christ calls us to be in community with each other. Now, he talks about the one sheep that goes astray, that gets lost. Then the shepherd will leave the 99 so that he can go and find that one. The 99 are stronger together. That one just needs to come back. And when he finds it and he comes back, not only does he have his sheep that was once lost, but he rejoices. And everybody rejoices together. All of his neighbors, it's this wonderful, exciting time. And then he says, that one person that repents and, and comes to me is way more important than the 99 that don't need to. It's that one thing. So you talk about repentance, right? So that was, that's my word of the week, repent. Repent! Right? And you think, what does it mean to repent? And so a lot of people think, people think that, well, you know, we need to change our ways. We need to do these things differently. We need to change our actions and how we do things. But that's not what it means. 
The word repent is a, in Greek is metanoia, is the name of that word. And it means to change your mind, to change your heart. That's what repenting is. So when Christ says multiple times in Scripture, it says Old Testament and New Testament, repent, change your mind. Come to me is what Jesus says. And that's the context that he used, repent, uses repentance in. Because if your mind and your heart are changed, your actions will follow. What a wonderful gift to understand what repentance means. Martin Luther says some, has some thoughts about repentance. Luther understood the biblical word for repent to simply mean a change of mind. Specifically, it meant to change one's mind about the entirety of one's life. That he has no righteousness to offer before God. He wrote, repentance simply lumps everything together and says everything is pure sin with us. Why would we want to spread so much time, spend so much time investigating, dissecting, or distinguishing individual sin as it's done in penance. And so he's talking about um, he's talking about what happens uh, in the Catholic Church, right? So, so in the Catholic Church, you sin and you confess, and they give you do these many penance, right? So this sin may be worse than this sin, right? So you might have to do more sins or more more penance if you do these things, right? But Martin Luther says no, it's all the same, and we're all forgiven the same. And we all repent the same. It's that changing your mind, shifting your mind towards the gospel. Now Christ calls us into community and to go out and find those lost sheep. And to, to, to encourage them to repent. Right? Because a lot of people don't know. And repentance comes through love. It comes through examples of love and how we treat each other. Because if you see somebody that's out on the fray and nobody's talking to them. You know, I see it all the time. You see people that, that may be homeless or food insecure. They may be standing on, on corners with a sign that says, need money, need food, need gas. And, you, and they're alone most of the time. But what kind of change in their mind and in their heart would it be if we showed love to those people? There's people in our communities. They don't have to be homeless. They don't have to be from anywhere else. They can be people that we know right now that are sitting at home all by themselves. And they just need a little bit of God's love to get them through. And that's repentance, folks. It's just that changing of your mind, changing of your spirit, and being able to forgive others that do that as well. Now, like sheep, it's up to the, the sheep, we all fall away sometimes. And it's up to us as the community of believers to invite them back. We are called to be sheep together. We're called to care for one another. Jesus told the parable of the lost sheep to express that God, the love that God has for God's people. God loves us so much that every single person counts. Every single person gets that grace. So Christ calls us to be, both be sheep and sometimes to be the shepherd like Pastor Ron was. There's a great comfort that comes from being the sheep because we're all together, the body of Christ, a bunch of sheep all here, stronger together. So this week, I want you to think about repentance. Go out, repent, change your mind. Think about what that means. Go out and, and be Christ in the world to everybody else. Go out and find that lost sheep and help them to understand how much God loves them. We give thanks for the sheep. We give thanks for the shepherds. And we give thanks for all of you. Amen. Oh, I forgot the best part before Phil gets started. To wrap this up, I just want to be a sheep. I just want to be a sheep. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep. Awesome. I invite you to stand as you're able as we continue with hymn number 779.
to tell you, when I'm sitting here looking up at the balcony, I mean, you guys are all glowing with the shepherd up there, so that's great. We continue by professing our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed, and that is found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. Your people receive mercy, and your grace overflows in our lives. Fill your church with faith and love, and give understanding hearts to those who work to strengthen our ecumenical and interreligious commitments. Lord, in your mercy. Your creation groans as it suffers the impacts of pollution and lack of care. As the seasons change, renew in us the will to protect our plants and animals and habitat. Bless us with bountiful harvests that all may share. Lord, in your mercy. Your world is shattered in the nation's rage. Remember us in your mercy. Teach wisdom to our elected leaders so that, they, so that we know peace in our world, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Your children wander homeless and the hungry cry for bread. Seek out those who are lost or lonely, anxious or depressed, or struggling with addiction or illness. Provide for those in any need. Lord, in your mercy. Your work is done in this congregation with our hands, feet, voices, minds, and hearts. Build up the ministries of this community that we serve our neighbors and welcome the stranger in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Your blessed saints who have died now, rest in your peace, rest in your presence. Give us thankful hearts for those who have been examples of faith in our lives. And receive us with joy when we come to share the eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer all these and all our prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share the peace.
I invite you to stand as you're able. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is set, and all are welcome. You may be seated.
for those who are communing with us from home, we commune together the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, we got some birthdays coming up this week. Let's see. Today we have, uh, let's see, Tim Rhodes, Steve Dower, and Gary Howard. But then this week we have Dana Anderson, Kirsten Heimer, Kevin Alton, Rebecca Carlson, Harper Bauer on the 13th. Harper, there you go. We're going to sing right to you today, okay? Uh, let's, see, let's see here. Caitlin Alton, uh, Sean Govier, Jordan Schneck, Tom Haxton, Janet Davies, Anna Anderson, Jessica Rawson, Mary Loftall, and Ryan Gaston. So let's sing to them, shall we? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. All right, a couple of quick uh, announcements. Let's see. The, um, today is rally day, and Jennifer will come up and make an announcement about that. Bible study will be at 7 o'clock Tuesday evening over at, uh, over at the Tillman's house. If you'd like to come and join us, we have a good time. It'll be a, a great night, but they either get in touch with me or the Tillmans or the Carlsons, and we'll let you know where you got to be which week. So that's a lot of fun. We have a great group. Um, second Wednesdays for all of our middle schoolers, 6th grade to 8th grade, will begin this coming Wednesday. So that will start at 6 o'clock, and uh, we'll just do, we'll do a meal, and we'll do some fellowship, and just kind of start to figure out what we're going to do for the year as a group. Uh, also, Kick, if you have kids that are 6th grade and below, um, Kick is the after-school program that, we do, that they do at Bethany College. And then I will be a part of that as well, teaching the Bible portion and doing opening worship with them. So uh, if you got youngsters that you want to come out, they'll walk them right from the school over to the church. Uh, and that's a great deal. So, so it's, it's a good chance for me to see some of our kiddos on a, on a little more regular basis. Uh, and then, let's see, I guess, yeah, next Saturday uh, will be First Communion Saturday. So that'll be at 4 o'clock here at Salemsburg. So if you'd like for your child to go through First Communion... Please have them come. That'll be 4 o'clock. Should be after all the morning sports and some of that kind of stuff. Uh, if you would like to do it you can't make it, come talk to me. And if you're not sure if your child is old enough, come talk to me anyway. And then we'll figure it out together. Um, I think that's all I have done for, please. So today is Rally Sunday for the Sunday School kids. We've got lots of activities planned today. So we will start off uh, with the children raising a joyful noise here in the sanctuary after coffee with music. And then we're going to go down to the Fellowship Center where we have some games and activities and crafts planned as we are planting the seed of faith in our young children. And this is this year we're kind of focusing on wandering through the wilderness. So um, parents, older siblings, you guys are welcome to come and help with the activities of our younger kids as you too can take something home um, from our activities. So we have games and crafts and music planned for today and I'm looking forward to seeing all of our young kids. The adults will be meeting downstairs um, where the choir normally practices and then the women will not be meeting today. They will meet next week. Thank you. Any other? Oh, in the golf tournament, another recurring announcement will be September 25th. And so we will not have worship here or at Fallen. The worship will be, we will have worship. It'll just be out at the golf course. Um, and so where's Mona's back here? Hey, Mona, how are we doing on teams and sponsorships? Do we still need some? 
All right, still need teams and still need uh, people. If you want to sponsor a whole, come see Mona or uh, Brita or any of those people. Um, it should be in your bulletin. You should have a, a flyer in there. So it's going to be a good time. Um, anything else? Any other announcements? We invite everybody down to coffee. That was one of Pastor Olson's favorite things. So uh, please come down and uh, greet the family. I'm sure they would love to hear stories if you have stories of their dad. And uh, that would be a great time. So. And, and I told them as they walked in, too, it was talk about a small Lutheran world. Uh, Pastor Olson and my dad were good friends because when we were in Belt, Missouri, he was in Grandview, which is just right down the road. And so they, uh, they were friends and colleagues for a, a long time when they were both there. So, All right. Prepare to receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. to stand as you're able as we close with hymn number 676. Now go in peace and let the Spirit lead. Have a great week, everyone.